everybody, this is Schmitty's Kettle Corn here. Today I'm going to talk to you about what it takes to legally set up and sell a concession stand and to sell at the farmer's market, also to sell legally a year of kettle corn business and what it takes, the, the general paperwork and the rundown here, and we're going to go through the numbers here. And I pretty much came up with seven numbers here from when I first started and how I came up about that by basically calling around and figuring out what I needed to do to legally sell. And a lot of this I learned as I went along by getting into certain events. Some places uh, specifically ask for things. And we'll go with these uh, lists here one by one. Thanks for following everybody. Thanks for liking my page. If you want to follow me, you can also follow me on Facebook. Um, thanks for following my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, I uh, am going to be soon monetizing. I got to get 500 more watch hours and then I can monetize. And that's the last thing I got to do. So let's go down the list here. The number one thing as far as for running your business is uh, calling your local health department. And once you figure out you're going to sell something. So let's say you're going to sell hot dogs or you're going to say, I want to sell kettle corn. In fact, before I started selling kettle corn, I wanted to sell something else. I wanted to sell caramel apples. And when I called my local health department, the local health department said that caramel apples were not covered under the cottage food law because apples were perishable. So that's when I decided to go back to kettle corn. Kettle corn is covered under the cottage food law. So I called my local health department. My local health department basically told me what I needed to, to legally sell at the farmer's market before I started. So that way I had a general idea of what I needed for the three compartment sink. And then I also found out that my, my selling the kettle corn was low risk. I found out that there's low, medium, and high risk. For example, I'm not selling beef, so I do not have to keep my popcorn at a certain temperature. Once it's done being cooked hot, it can be pretty much eaten, and it's very hard for somebody to get sick um, making kettle corn improperly. And with me being very clumsy, and I'm not um, the, the I, I was not um, totally um, uh, you know left over, and not to worry about keeping up with buying stuff always fresh. The popcorn stays fresh for a long time in these bags. And that's what I found out as I went along. The number two thing that you need is to have a business license. I paid $175 for a business license for three years, and I decided to become Schmitty's Kettle Corn LLC. And you can become an LLC, sole proprietor. Um, sometimes people will have partners. They can uh, become an LLC to have, you know, multiple business owners. So you can you, you both need to file, or if you're a husband and wife team versus that. Luckily, I do not have a partner yet, and I don't know if I'm going to ever. Um, we can even talk about that later down the road. I've had some people who inquired about becoming a partner, but with a business license, that legally um, you know, lets you set up for tax information. And then the next thing that we'll, that you're going to require is to have general liability insurance. I already talked at, about that in a previous video, which I'll link below. And the liability insurance, um, I used to have uh, flip insurance. That's, the, that's the, from what I've heard, a really good insurance. I've known people that had it for seven, ten years, never had a problem. I decided to go to State Farm, and then I never had an issue, never had to file a claim. Luckily, knock on wood, my stuff has never been broken to where or stolen to where I've had to um, file a claim, and I like to keep my insurance low to where in case I really need it. So I have a general liability insurance with State Farm. For sixty-seven dollars a month, and I pay to have twenty thousand dollars coverage. Number five is uh, oh, number four is uh, registering with the IRS. Now that's going to give you your EIN number. The one thing that I learned about the EIN number is that uh, oftentimes when you get into events for tax purposes and when you file your taxes, you will have to f um, show that you, you what you sold and stuff. And there's sales tax and there's also income tax. The one thing with the, with the EIN number is that you have to file it, and of course, even being here, where we have multiple jurisdictions, we have the the DMV is Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. We also have out-of-state, where if I was to go into uh, Pennsylvania, for example, and sell on PA, um, you actually have to have several different EIN uh, numbers. And so if I wanted to go to, e to, to PA just for one event, the market manager may say, hey, you might need to have an EIN number. So that's something to think about. Look, look up EIN. It's a way to register with the IRS, and that way, you know, you're covered from when you have to file taxes. It'll ask you for an EIN number in the future. Number five is have equipment. That's pretty handy. We all know what that is. Um, you know, full setup here. You know, popcorn machine. Everything be food safe. That's really important, and especially when you have 
to be inspected by the health department. They're going to inspect you and make sure everything's kosher. And then on top of that, you might even have to have different things for different counties. So the reason why I said in the first one, three compartment sink, the three compartment sink, um, sometimes you'll have to have these little bleach strips and I'll po um, post a picture of what those look like. The bleach strips are these, these uh, things that we can measure the uh, strength of the bleach. I have soap, I have uh, water. And sometimes with the, with the water, you have to have free flowing water. So that's another really important thing. And there's all these things that you kind of learn as you go along. I've had a health department come by and say, hey, my water cooler was not cool. And they wanted me to have a free flowing water to where if I wash my hands, I don't have to worry about touching the faucet to get it dirty, to get my hands dirty again. And then these are all the things that you will learn as you go along with the health department. And then the other um, one here is um, making sure everything is food safe, your scoops, your bags. And, you know, you don't want to just go to the grocery store and, and, and use a bag to put your popcorn in. Number six um, is something that I've learned, um, especially with doing this business, plan where you're going to sell. So, for example, if you're going to sell at the farmer's market or the flea market, um, f f find out beforehand before you start selling. Um, if you plan on selling out in the side of the road, call your local health department. In fact, the one thing I thought about with the side of the road like, if, what if I just sell up on the side, side of the street here? I actually have a form from the health department that says underneath that it says if you're unregistered or unlicensed and you sell on the side of the road and you get caught, you can pay up to between $500 and $1,000 for a day of vending. And you may also be able to get your equipment taken away from you. So these are some things to think about. If you do it on the side of the road, I don't know how legal that is. I've seen people do it before. I'd like to figure out and know your comments down below. I also know people sell in front of grocery stores and they take a percentage of your sales. There's all these ideas on, on where and, and how to sell for your product. And um, like, for example, I see hot dog carts in front of grocery stores, even at the dollar store, it doesn't hurt. At the end of the day, the worst I can do is say no. And then number seven, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is find out your local competition and then stand out and make yourself different from what they do. So I have about three or four competitors here. Um, some I have seen and known uh, in the area. There's one here that does a lot of Ethiopian flavors. There's some here that only do events. There are some that are retired. I have brick and mortar stores here that are very expensive and more expensive than I am. And they are not necessarily fresh on site for this, for the, for the same day. And, you know, Baltimore is a very large area. And if you have a very large area and don't have to worry about it, you know, you don't have to really worry about competition, then then go for it. Um, you know, but sometimes you may have to have competition. Sometimes that may hurt your sales. Sometimes it's, it's, there are people out there in locations where you can't vend. So when I call and, and ask for an event, I have gotten four or five event requests um, this year already for some new events. I ask them, number one, is there a kettle corn person? Number two, is there a popcorn person? I've gone to events where the market manager has said, there is no kettle corn person, but then I go inside and there's a popcorn person. Well, that's pretty much the same thing, but according to the market manager, he said it's not. So that's when I backed out of the event and I make sure that I'm the only kettle corn person or popcorn person at the event. And then if it's profitable for me, I say, hey, I want to come back. If not, then I don't come back. So these are some of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, your, first, your first year running the, 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 for the kettle corn business. And this is something that have really helped me. And if this is helping you, thanks you guys for liking. Follow me and, and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, I'll show you guys a way to support my channel. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, you can buy me one down below on my page on coffee.com. Uh, it's $5 for a cup of coffee. And thanks for watching. And I hope to get some more subscribers this year. This year I'm going to have a good year. I hired a graphic designer this year. And he's going to start with me starting next month. I'm going to go on vacation to see my whole family for a whole month in California and then come back. And then that's when my season starts. All right, guys, have a good season. 2023, guys.